Well, it's a November day, uh, middle of November, cold in Paris, freezing actually. Behind me you have the Palais de Luxembourg, the palace built by Mary de Medicis. She was a young Italian, got married to a king and didn't enjoy the Louvre at all. The Louvre was just a military fortress. She was an Italian, the Renaissance had started in Italy, so her dream was to create an Italian palace. She spent 25 years obtaining all this land. She used to borrow and rent it for the weekend and so on, get people used to moving out. Gradually acquired the uh, 10 or 15 acres, 20 acres actually, of this park, and then spent 25 years of her life building a palace for her beloved darling King Charles X. And when the palace was almost completed, a man named Richelieu, who had a lot of power in France, said to the king, this queen's getting on my nerves. We get rid of her. They put her in a stagecoach, sent her to Germany, and she spent the rest of her life in Germany dreaming of the beautiful Renaissance palace that she built in Paris for herself and her wonderful husband. And there came the 40 so-called queens of Paris. There's statues of 40 queens here around the boat basin here in the Luxembourg. But one of the queens is actually saint jean -Vier. She's the patron saint of Paris, and uh, died at 94, a virgin. And her great service to Paris was that uh, when the barbarians got here, one of the waves of barbarians, Attila the Hun and the Huns, when they showed up here in Paris, saint jean walked out, had a little talk with Attila, and uh, he left with his Huns and left Paris unattacked, unravaged, unraped, and so on. So saint jean saved Paris and therefore she became the patron saint of Paris. Take a look at her, she's quite a beauty. She lived from 426 to 512. Died in 1984, something like that. But anyway, during a, her body is still uh, in a golden casket, which you can find in the church right behind the Pantheon. And in the old days, when there was a drought in Paris and they weren't getting enough rain, they drag saint jean Vier's coffin out in the street, run it up and down the streets of the mountain that we're on here, and guess what? It would rain again. Behind me, we have one of the two coffee shops here in the Luxembourg Gardens. It's called Waffles, the Goffle. And it's over 100 years old, about 110 years old right now, and just as beautiful and clean as the day it was built. Now, during the summer, we get a huge crowd out here under the chestnut trees. You're in a little forest of chestnut trees, which is about five or ten degrees cooler than the rest of Paris all summer long. So on the hot days, you come over here, grab a seat, a couple hundred seats actually if you look, and spend your time here in the Luxembourg Gardens. Lego fountain of the Medicis or the Medicis fountain. It's been moved around a few few times since they built it, so this is just its most recent location. But it has this wonderful um, darkness about it, a kind of a romantic uh, guilty and uh, 19th century feeling to it. And down at the end, a wonderful statue of a, a huge god overlooking a pair of lovers. And of course it's got all the ducks in the garden are usually. Well, here we are at the heart of the Luxembourg farm, the Medici's farm, which is this beautiful statue of a naked lady in the arms of her lover, and over her head a jealous god looking at her. I forget the name of these particular characters of legend, but the statue speaks to us. 